As someone who's been a Sonic fan since the very beginning, the character of Knuckles the Echidna has always been important to me. No offence to Tails either, he's great, but Knuckles was a big deal when he first came along. Every media arm of the franchise was hyping him to the moon, and he was the first character to come along and actually be sold as anywhere near Sonic's equal. And that was a big deal. No longer did every kid on the playground want to be Sonic. There was a cool new kid in town, and his name was Knuckles. Similar to how I am with Shadow, I'm pretty protective when it comes to Knuckles' character. My boy has had a rough go of it for a while now, but with Sonic Frontiers and the second movie being so strong for him, you can bet your ass I was excited when I heard he was getting his own show. Expectations were sufficiently tempered when I learned the premise of the show was Knuckles teaching Wade the ways of a warrior, but overall, still pretty excited. I ended up a day late to the party, thanks to Paramount's shitty staggered release, so I did see some spoiler-free discourse around the show on Twitter, but it can't be that bad, right? The show opens strong, putting its best foot forward with a cool montage of Knuckles training like a badass. Scandal's Warrior was a decent choice of song here, but I still can't help feeling like a broken record pointing out the constant missed opportunities to use music from the series. And the amount of licensed music in this show almost feels like it's taunting me at this stage. Live and learn in the third movie, or I riot. Basically, the expectation from everyone is that with the fight against Robotnik now over, Knuckles should be relaxing and enjoying everything that a peaceful Earth has to offer. But Knuckles is having trouble shaking his warrior ways, treating every spare moment as a chance to train and any and all visitors to the Wachowski home as an invading force. Maddie gets pissed at him for traumatizing a construction crew working on the house, but we got to see him use his drill claw ability, so I don't see the problem. Feeling pent up and lacking in purpose, Knuckles exists on a diet of grapes and Cool Ranch Dorito product placements. Thankfully though, he's still funny as hell, mentoring the dog on the ways of a warrior, and when Sonic is trying to figure out how to help him adjust by chatting with him about how beautiful Green Hills is, Knuckles just slaps him down with a simple, no. Sonic tries to win Knuckles over with talk of home, but Knuckles is still having a hard time feeling attached to anything, telling Sonic that he doesn't have a home, and that the only reason he's here is the promise he made to him and Tails, and he intends to keep it. Sonic tells him that the fight is over, and they won. He's allowed to relax a bit and make himself at home. While obviously the conversation is about something very different, this scene puts me in mind of the chat Sonic and Knuckles had in Frontiers. The setup is very similar, so that's an automatic win in my book. You really can't beat a good bro down. Unfortunately for everyone though, Knuckles takes the idea of making himself at home to a new level. Redesigning the house with an arena death pit and kidnapping the mailman to pit against a dog in combat. Which promptly gets him grounded, which he accepts with honour. I honestly can't fault Knuckles' character so far. If you liked him in the movies, you'll like him here, so, so far so good on that front. We then get 4 minutes and 30 seconds of Wade's bowling drama, as he's bullied by a Girl Scout and dropped from his team by his friend Jack. Not gonna lie, after a decent opening, this worried me. Still struggling and unsure of what to do, Knuckles prays to his elders for guidance, for a sign. And he actually gets one, in the form of Chief Pachacamac's spirit. He's a lot goofier than I would have expected considering the source material, but we did get promotional shots of him in bowling attire, so I can't really say I'm surprised. Adaptations, yay. He tells Knuckles that his quest isn't over. As the last of his tribe, he must now train an apprentice in the ways of the Echidna, ensuring that their ranks can start to grow again. And yeah, for whatever reason, Wade is handpicked for the position. Knuckles doesn't know it yet, but that tournament of champions is definitely bowling. It's bowling, isn't it? Oh, dear God, no! Knuckles agrees and recruits Wade, and so begins the opposites attract buddy buddy cop dynamic. Wade, of course, constantly tries too hard to break the ice with Knuckles, but he's having none of it. Please stop. Have a feeling I'm going to be needing this clip a lot in this analysis, but apparently Gunn has a London division keeping an eye on our alien trio, and two dirty agents there are aware that Knuckles has left Green Hills. They plan to sell Knuckles to a newly introduced bad guy aptly named The Buyer, a guy who has been making black market weapons powered by Knuckles' fur. What, like he's been scooping the hair out of their shower drain or something? That was weird. Meanwhile, Knuckles finally finds out what this battleground Wade is traveling to really involves. 
At first, he disapproves, but when he sees the aim of the game is to smash all the pins, he gets on board. Plus, Wei tells him how the game helps him connect with his dad, who... Nope, didn't die, abandoned him as a child. What? This seems to resonate with Knuckles, who, I guess, also lost his dad? As opposed to his dad just ditching him. And understanding now that bowling gives Wade a sense of comfort and home, he's happy to help him. But they're soon interrupted by Bad Guys Inc. I'm sorry, I'm not blaming the actors, they were written and directed this way. But every time I see and hear them, I feel like I'm watching Home Alone 4 taking back the house. You know, after those movies became terrible. Maybe that's by design? I don't know. I just know that most of the time, it was impossible for me to take them seriously. You can literally play Perilous Plan from the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog over them and it doesn't seem out of place. Kid Cootie parrots a line from the movie before Knuckles proceeds to kick their asses. I actually enjoyed this fight scene, even if it was a bit short. With Knuckles handling them easily enough, the villains have to resort to using a ring to teleport him into the cage. And they leave arguing over who should get more credit for the capture. <laughs> now left alone, it's up to Wade to come to Knuckles' rescue. Our two agents have taken Knuckles to the Ice Cap Ski Resort to meet the buyer. Don't get excited, the name Ice Cap is about as exciting as this location gets. Wade is hot on their heels though, and as he thinks back to his police training, which apparently consisted of watching bad boys, he rightly worries he may not be ready for this. Knuckles, meanwhile, is passing the time in his cage by making himself belly laugh at the thought of dismembering his captors, while Wade has a five minute fantasy of his own, imagining himself as some sort of James Bond MacGyver hybrid as he comes to Knuckles' rescue. Please stop. Back in the real world, after bitching a cootie about talking to Knuckles, Agent Willoughby talks to Knuckles. But luckily, the moment is interrupted as Wade shows up to bumble his way into a fight with Kid Cootie. After some attempts at a comedic exchange, Cootie talks about being an underground bare knuckle cage fighter or some shit. So naturally, that translates to putting Wade on a deli counter and spinning him around before taking a call from his mommy. You know, that classic MMA move. Wade escapes by literally home aloneing him. I'm talking chili sauce to the face, slipping on debris, and wheelie table through some glass. I promise I didn't know this was coming when I made that reference earlier. It's just that bad. Wade finally makes the save by blowing up Knuckles' cage and the pair flee off a cliff. Knuckles gliding Wade to safety was like Harry Potter on a hippogriff meets E.T. and I was actually all here for it. Now safe, the pair chat over dinner. And when Knuckles discovers there's no grapes or Cool Ranch product placements, he's pretty blunt with Wade on how his rescue attempt went. The show then does a bit of bridging the gap between them with Wade telling Knuckles that a win is a win and not everything has to be perfect. They talk about home again, about betrayal, and Wade says that warrior or not, the one thing he'd never do is betray a friend. You can see this brings down Knuckles' walls a bit, and this is one of the few moments in the show where I felt a bond was actually being properly formed through some strong dialogue. Credit where it's due, I like this moment for Knuckles and Wade. As they make their way to Reno, they hear over the radio that Wade is now a fugitive with a bounty on his head. Funny that, wasn't Wade just betrayed by a bowling bounty hunter? And where does everyone who's ever been on the run go to lay low? Mama's house. I'm just gonna be honest, episode 3 was the most batshit thing I've ever seen. I still have no idea what I watched, why it was written, or who was supposed to find it funny. Was it supposed to be funny? Maybe it wasn't, because I have no fucking idea what it was. This episode is 99% sitting at a dinner table, listening to the most ball-breakingly cringe exchanges between Wade and his sister, and wondering whether you've gone insane or are actually hearing the words you heard. I'm working for the FBI. What is that? Why do you say it like that? Wade? Wade? You leave my grapes out of this. So, is he Jewish? What? No phones at the table. It's work, Mom! Oh, and Wade apparently dry humped an American gladiator cutout. I've never seen one so plump and swollen. I honestly felt like I was having a nervous breakdown watching this. The most off the wall, batshit thing I've watched in recent memory. <laughs> She just stabbed him in the arm. And all he can say is he'd punch her if she wasn't a woman? Dude, punch her in the fucking face. Nobody would blame you. What did I do to deserve this? 
Yeah, watching this, that's exactly what I was thinking. After 14 minutes of... Whatever that was, we get a Keanu cameo, comforting us with thoughts of something good to come, and we also learn that Pistol Pete, the champion bowler, is Wade's dad, and the whole reason he wants to go to the championships. It's kinda getting to the point where the show is laying it on so thick now, that it's pretty hard to feel any real sympathy anymore. If this was my wife, and this was my daughter, you can bet your ass I'd disappear. Granted, I'd probably have taken Wade with me though. The episode finally changes for the better when the bounty hunters come for Wade, and Knuckles and Wendy Whipple get to kick their asses. Baffling combat abilities aside, this scene was pretty good. I especially love the revolving camera as Knuckles and Wendy punch and frying pan everybody. The episode wraps up with what I'm guessing is supposed to be a touching moment of the whole family coming together. But honestly, I just hate these guys too much to care. And it doesn't make up for the huge waste of time that three quarters of this episode was. I had hoped that episode 3 was only a blip, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Episode 4 has all the cringe of the third, but none of the knuckles. Basically, Wade's traitorous friend Jack the Bowling Bounty Hunter comes for him, locks him in an electrified cage, and carts him off. Knuckles' absence is explained as him letting Wade learn how to rescue himself. And while that would be fine in principle, the whole batshit nonsense approach this show goes for falls considerably flat without Knuckles around to prop it up. As ex-best friends, Wade tries to reason with Jack, but he only cares about the money. It's so bad, the show pretty much sums up this episode itself. Oh my god, not with this story, it goes on forever. Knuckles then calls Wade because, you know, it's the Knuckles show. Why should he actually be here when animating him is expensive? Yeah, the whole defense this show gets for having so little Knuckles in it, that being the cost of animating him, is a complete non-runner for me. If you don't have the time or the budget to have the main character in the show, make less episodes. This could have been a great show with four or even three episodes, and would have benefited heavily from a more concise story. Personally, I'd much prefer less of an awesome thing than more of meh. But maybe that's just me. Knuckles tells Wade that he needs to meditate to find his inner strength. And then, because the show is seemingly about being cruel to Wade at any opportunity, Jack electrocutes him for no reason. Happy coincidence though, this helps Wade meditate his way to the great battleground in the sky, where he's greeted by Chief Pachacamac, who promptly shoots a rainbow in his mouth so the real torture can begin. A low-budget rock opera called The Flames of Disaster depicting the war between the owls and echidnas. And like episode 3, I once again feel like I'm high watching this. Linking The Flames of Disaster to Knuckles would usually be an adaptation I'd find really interesting, but this tacky way they've chosen to delve into Knuckles Knuckles' lore is just too insulting for me to care. Like Pachacamac, this whole section is one giant joke, with the payoff consisting of Puppet Iblis, a name they seem very careful not to use by the way, shilling Facebook Marketplace for the second time in one episode. I honestly feel like the humor and product placement has to be aimed at the parents forced to watch this with their kids, because I've never met anyone of my generation who uses Facebook fucking marketplace. Do Gen Z even use Facebook at all? It's jarring as hell and just shits all over the lore of the series. If cost is an issue, do a 2D still shot animation like in the movies, it's not that hard. Kids, the target audience for this show, are not stupid. Yet all all this show does is treat them like they are. Oh, five seconds have passed. Let's eat some Cool Ranch shit and hit Wade again. LOL. Anyway, Wade learns how Knuckles discovered that true strength comes from within and how he invoked the flames of disaster. And in the real world, he then breaks free of his cage. A power we never see him use again, by the way. He beats Jack in a jousting duel on a BMX he stole, chops off his ponytail, and forces him to strip in front of some kids. Oh look, more words I'd never thought I'd say in that order. Don't look at me! Knuckles is proud of Wade, likely because he didn't see the duel, and the pair now make their way to Reno on their new hog. With Wendy and Wanda following behind, oh for f They arrive at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, where Wade finally catches up with his dad. I genuinely had no idea what I was supposed to feel here. They seemed to patch things up, but this was the most awkward thing I've ever watched. Like, why is his dad acting like everything's okay, and repeatedly asking Wade what he's doing here? 
Oh, the son you abandoned shows up? What could he possibly want? And why hasn't Wade asked him why he left? I get that he's a nervous and kind-hearted guy and is probably avoiding conflict while also being afraid of the answer, but I mean, come on. The answer to that question will likely define your relationship with him. It can't just be ignored. And I get that this will obviously be revealed later, but it's just so unnatural and hard to watch. Meanwhile, our two rogue gun agents seem to be in a bit of trouble, as we see them being dragged to the buyer by his goons. And he is not happy with them. Turns out he too used to work for Gun, though then it was just a shadow op ran by Robotnik. But when Sonic came along and Robotnik went rogue, Gun was repurposed and ordered to erase all past connections to Robotnik, including the buyer. See, this would have been an interesting story if the character actually appeared in the show for more than two seconds. A full backstory on the buyer would have been a better episode than a dysfunctional family dinner or crapping on Knuckles' lore, just saying. Agent Willoughby uses this moment to try and rebuild trust, saying she betrayed Gunn because they wouldn't listen to her concerns about Sonic and his friends. Instead of neutralizing them, they were let stay free, dropping quills with the power of bombs while she was demoted. Still needing Knuckles, the buyer lets them live, but only if they capture him. We then return to normality for this show with a seven-year-long bowling montage, complete with super cringe commentary and a hefty helping of I don't care. The more I think about it, I'm so glad Knuckles' character was kept on point for this show, because every time I find myself wondering where the hell he is, I suddenly realize I'm actually happy his character is being preserved by not being around for this nonsense. If you care, the tournament comes down to Wade versus his dad. Shocker, right? While catching up over drinks, Wade finally asks his dad why he left. And the answer is just as shallow and predictable as expected. Oh, he was searching for something and thought he could only find it on the lanes. Basically, your classic deadbeat dad. Wow. What a payoff to this journey. Anyway, Wade forgives him, which is unfortunate because of course he's working with the gun agents and only cares about winning the tournament. With his mother and sister held captive, he tells Wade to drop out of the tournament and send an unsuspecting Knuckles into a trap. And seemingly with no choice, Wade reluctantly betrays Knuckles in order to save his family. Clearly playing on what he said earlier about it being the one thing he'd never do. But of course Knuckles outsmarts the agents. And it turns out Wade didn't betray him. Knuckles heard everything that was going on over the earpiece. Which is kind of weird they had that set up when Wade didn't seem to suspect anything, but let's just go with it. The best thing about this scene was Knuckles dropping the Julia Roberts line from Pretty Woman. The fight scene between Knuckles and the agents is good, but once again is let down by the weirdest choices of licensed music. Wade sneaks past the chaos to save his family, and once again this woman screams mental illness. She would rather dislocate her thumb than have Wade help her. What the actual fuck is wrong with her? Knuckles slaps a pair of crooked agent ass cheeks, and when they try and pull the sneaky ring portal trick again, this time he's ready for them. The two rings make a kind of portal situation, and the two are sucked in just before the rings destroy each other. With the immediate threat gone, Knuckles reminds Wade that he needs to go beat his dad at the tournament. And this social cancer rescues herself. Yeah, fuck you. Wade should have done it. It's his show. Anyway, ten minutes of the final episode consists of bowling and playground exchanges between Wade and his dad. Please stop. Knuckles then hears a ruckus, and the final showdown with the buyer finally begin- Oh, never mind. We have another five minutes of bowling to do. Wade wins. Yay! The buyer drains Knuckles of his power, and with his machine now fully charged, he's about to take Knuckles out for good. Until Wade and the bad smells that won't go away come to his aid. While holding off the buyer with... Bowling balls, Wade talks to Knuckles about friendship, fighting together, honor, and home. It was decent character progression for Wade now to be the one inspiring Knuckles after a whole show of Knuckles inspiring him. The dynamic between Knuckles and Wade should have really been all the show was about, but here it just gets lost between the mountains of cringe on either side of it, which is a shame. Wade's pep talk revives Knuckles, and grabbing the mech by its tentacles, he drains its energy to reabsorb his power. Invoking the flames of disaster, still can't believe that's something I'm saying, Knuckles absolutely demolishes the buyer. And while this did make for a cool scene, the fight still ultimately fell flat for me. There was never a genuine sense of danger, and the whole thing is over in two minutes. Which, when you consider that 15 plus minutes of the episode was bowling, is just insulting. In the end, Wade wins the trophy and we see Knuckles. Which, for this show, is an achievement in itself. 
I wasn't really the biggest fan of Wade in the Sonic movies. Don't get me wrong, I understand his purpose. The quick and dirty slapstick guy who will drop goofy one-liners and reactions to the crazy shit happening around him. A role that, when done properly, will complement a narrative and never outstay its welcome. But this show stretches that minor role out for its entire runtime. And between Wade and his family, it quickly becomes the whole show. Had Knuckles had a bigger presence in this show, with most events centering around him, Wade could have complemented things perfectly. I thought, when the premise of the show was first revealed, that I'd properly set my expectations around what the show would be. But I didn't even come close. Nothing could have prepared me for the Wade family in all their dysfunctional splendor, and I genuinely have no idea why episode 3 and 4 of this show exist. If I wanted a sitcom, I'd watch something funny and well-written, like The Office or Parks and Recreation. I wanted to see Knuckles in a show about Knuckles, and I guess that's my own fault or something. I thought the show would have been about a journey for Knuckles, as he became a bit more like the mellow version we ended up with in Sonic Adventure 2 and Heroes, bridging the gap between his warriorhood and Zen through his friendship with Wade. Maybe with some sort of small segue into the third movie as a cherry on top, but I couldn't have been more wrong. No, a vague reference by annoying commentators about an alien 50 years ago doesn't count. The only Knuckles lore the show taps into is primarily used as a joke. And the show is really just about Knuckles counseling Wade on his horrible family and half of it didn't need to exist. If, for any reason, they had to pad it out with entire episodes of dinner and bowling, why not just cut the show down to four or three episodes? Center it around Knuckles and Wade, use the shorter runtime to include Knuckles more, and use various 2D animations to tell the backstory and build up the bad guy. The show would have been all the better for it, and it would have actually given Sonic fans what they wanted. I will say that the action scenes with Knuckles are by far the show's strong point. Knuckles as a whole was very enjoyable throughout the show, and it was nice to see that his character remained very much intact despite everything else. For those of you out there who liked it for what it was, that's fine. And I know there's a lot of negativity going around about this show, and it can get a little tiresome listening to people crap on something you like. But all I ask is that you be honest with yourself. Take away the things you like, and what do you think of what's left? Because when I do that, all I'm left with is a show I would never watch. And as a piece of Sonic media centering around one of its main characters, I just don't think it did him justice. And when Paramount is looking at what worked about this show and what didn't when planning for a sequel or some other spin-off, I don't want positivity for positivity's sake to make them create something else like this. I went in with an objective lens and scraped as hard as I could for positives. And really, the sparse showing for Knuckles is all there was. Wade's family and the bowling theme just destroyed any bond building with them for me. But now, I really want to hear what you guys think. What did you like about the show? What didn't you like about the show? And what, if anything, would you change about it to make it perfect? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and make sure to turn on notifications to see more from me. If you'd like to support the channel and see your name at the end of my videos, you can check out my Patreon or become a channel member. All your support is much appreciated. But for now, a big thank you for watching. And as always guys, take care.